Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and today I want to talk about the song Coma because Matt Sorum brought something up that I had never known about the song previously. Now one cool thing about the song that Matt tweeted out on Twitter recently is that this was, song was done in one straight take which is mind-blowing considering it's I think the longest song off the Illusions records. It has no chorus and it sounds like a very complicated and complex song. So here's what Matt wrote on Twitter. He said, haven't listened to this in a while. Remember kids, we did this live one take. No computers, not bad. Hashtag coma. Now, the only other member of the band who publicly spoke about the song recently was Axel during a 2017 concert in, I think it was Buffalo, New York. He said that Slash personally came down to the studio to make sure that Axel was singing the lyrics just like how he imagined it in his head. So without further ado, guys, here's the true story behind the song Coma. In addition to appearing on Use Your Illusion 1, the song also appeared on the Japanese version of Live Era. Now, it's thought that the Japanese version of Live Era was taken from the Omaha concert that Guns N' Roses did in 1993 as part of the Skin and Bones tour. Now, in addition to appearing on the Japanese versions of Live Era, it also appeared on the vinyl copies of Live Era as well. So about a month after the Live Era album came out, Guns N' Roses actually allowed fans to download the live version of Coma from the album off Kanak.com. And one notable thing about Coma is that it's the longest song that Guns N' Roses have ever released as a band. It clocks in at 10 minutes and 14 seconds, and the song was written by Slash and Axl Rose. So here's what Axl had to say about the song when he was interviewed by Kurt Loder back in 1990. But you had mentioned there's something on the, a song on this album that's coming up that might cause some problems. You think is there anything? There's you can a say? song called Coma that is like 11 minutes and 45 seconds long with no chorus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I think there was only one verse that like re somewhat repeats itself. Um, it's Slash's baby, it's his monster. The song used to be called Girth. <laughs> um, but I started writing about when I OD'd four years ago, mm. and the reason I OD'd was because of stress. I couldn't take it, yeah. and I just grabbed this bottle of pills in, in, a, in, a, in an argument and just gulped them down. Yeah. And I ended up in the hospital, and but I liked that I wasn't in the fight anymore, and I was fully conscious that I was leaving. Yeah, I liked that, but then I I go. All of a sudden, my my first real thoughts, though, were that, okay, you haven't toured enough, the record's not going to last, it's going to be forgotten, and this and that, you have work to do, get out of this. And I went, no, and I woke up, you know, wow. and pulled myself out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but in the describing of that, some people could take it wrong and think this means go put yourself into a coma, yeah. you know, and so it's gonna, it's really tricky, and I'm still playing with the words to figure out how to, like, show some hope in there. Yeah. We seem to have, I mean, from a couple of years ago, like ODing on pills, you've come a long way since then. Do you feel more settled down now? I and mean, you seem pretty relaxed and together. Yeah, but it's been a lot of work to do that because there's, you know, part of, we got used to like, as the Eagles would say, everything all the time. As and, the would say. you know, living that way and going for it. And all of a sudden you started to really, and then that's what got us here. That's what got us signed. That's what got us on top of things. And then you started, then you got to a point where you go, wait a minute. Everything that got me here is also starting to self yeah. starting, I'm starting to self-destruct. It's starting to tear up my life. I have to figure out how to channel my energies other directions. It's, it's a weird one. Settling down is a weird one. So Axel did another interview in 1992 with Interview Magazine, and he talked about songwriting, and the topic of coma got brought up. He said, at times I enjoy writing, and other times I just hate it because it's definitely having to go back and experience some pain and express how you really feel. Sometimes the writing ends up being cathartic in the long run, but like writing Coma on Use Your Illusion 1 was so heavy, I'd start to write and I'd just pass out. I've tried to write that song for a year and couldn't. I went to write it in the studio and passed out. I woke up two hours later and sat down and wrote the whole end of the song, like, just off the top of my head. It was like, don't even know what's coming out, man, but it's coming. I think one of the best things I've ever written was maybe the end segment of Coma. It it just poured out. I thank Slash for that because I used to curse him going, man, that son of a bitch has written this thing and I've got to write to it and don't know what to write. It was so hard. It made me feel like I don't know how to write. I should just quit. But I finally did write it and I ended up feeling a lot better about the situations I expressed in that song. Now Slash talked a lot about Coma as well. He said my next home in 1989 was a house that Izzy and I rented up in the Hollywood Hills and that lasted for about a month. 
We had fun while we were there and I also managed to write a lot. I wrote Coma and two of us wrote Locomotive in that house. There was some creativity going on. Later on in Slash's book, he talked a little bit more about Coma. He said, as well as a long, heavy guitar riff uh, mantra I wrote, Living With Izzy, that evolved into the song Coma. The song was eight minutes long. It was just a repeating pattern that got increasingly mathematical and involved in its precision as it progressed. Axel loved it, but at first, it was one song he couldn't come up with the lyrics for. He was very proud of his gift for lyrics, as he was pretty frustrated for it, until one night, months later, the words just came to him. Now Slash also did state in his book that the only other effect that wasn't synthesized besides the gospel singers on Knocking on Heaven's Door and the harmonica and Bad Obsession was a defibrillator at the very beginning of Coma. He said, yeah, that was real. And Slash has also stated that he wrote Coma during one of his heroin deliriums. And Slash did comment on writing the song, something that Axel actually disagreed with years later. So in an interview he did in 1992, Slash claimed, when I wrote Coma, it was over a pretty short period of time, but it was not a one day song. I kept playing around with ideas and then tying it together. This is another song that I basically arranged when I brought to the band. I wrote the whole song amazingly enough on acoustic. When I play with the band live and electrically, I turn the volume down, tone it down for the middle section. I was actually looking forward to doing that part when we were in the studio. Now years later after Slash and Axel had parted ways and they were still not on good terms. Uh, Axel did a bunch of Q&A, uh, Q&As on different Guns N' Roses fan forums in 2008, shortly after Chinese Democracy came out, and he actually referenced the song Coma. He said, yes, Slash was in Guns and on Jungle, and the whole I came to him for his riff is as much crap as him saying he brought Locomotive and Coma in as complete songs, and he has the rights to perform it, but not be represented in this context in association with Guns N' Roses. And he was basically also referring to the lawsuit with Guitar Hero 3, and the use of Welcome to the Jungle in the game as well. So Izzy Stradlin also talked a bit about Coma. Now before the Illusions albums came out, he did an interview with The Vox where he said, Slash has the song, it's called Coma, and it's even 15 minutes long. And I still don't know it, man. I have to take a special chord chart with me whenever we played. There's like 50 chords at the end on it, and I just can't follow them. He also had this to say in 1992 with Rip Magazine. He said, uh, that was a long song, wasn't it, referring to Coma. I never did learn that song. What I did is I had a chord chart on stage for the tour because there was 30 changes and they didn't flow naturally for me. I think that was Slash's song more than anything because he was more into heavier Metallica sort of thing. I think we only played it three times live. Now in an interview that Duff did with Mick Wall for his book The Most Dangerous Band in the World, Duff had this to say about the song. He said, we actually got the song called Girth. Well, it's not going to be called Girth on the album, it'll get changed, but it's such a heavy song we call it Girth for now. It's named after this guy West Arkeen who writes with us sometime. He's a real little effer, right? But his dick, it's only about this long, but it's like wide man, so he's got girth, right? So we call the song Girth. Now, if you guys have ever seen the making effing videos for November Rain, there's a short segment where Axel talks about going into rehearsal when they were auditioning replacement guitar players for Izzy Stradlin. And he said he walked in and saw uh, Gilby, and he saw Gilby jamming on Coma, and that's when he sort of knew that Gilby would be the right replacement for Izzy. And uh, Gilby was also interviewed, and he was asked about what the hardest song to play live is for him. So he said, without a doubt, Coma. I still don't know it. It's like 15 or 20 minute song with no repeats. Now Guns N' Roses did not perform Coma a whole lot during the Use Your Illusion tour. They performed it about four times or so and the first performance was done in Richfield, Ohio just before the albums came out back in June of 1991. Probably the best known live version during the Use Your Illusion tour was their Chicago 1992 show. They also performed it live at one of the shows they did in Japan in 1992 and then of course in Omaha, Nebraska in 1993 and then many years went by and they never performed it live again until the Not In This Lifetime tour started and they've pretty much played it at every single show as part of the Not In This Lifetime tour with the exception of the Troubadour show. Now there is a short clip of Axel rehearsing the song prior to them playing Rock in Rio in Brazil in 1991. So in 2016 when Axel was touring with ACDC he did an interview with Chinese Exchange and he said that they purposely brought back the song Coma as part of the Not This Lifetime tour because he knew it would make Slash happy. Now on Gibbo's YouTube channel, which you guys should definitely check out, he's got an awesome YouTube channel. He's got a version of Axel's advanced demo copy for you to listen to. I have a link to it down below. And now let's talk about where the song ranks on the Guns N' Roses Best to Worst song list. So... LA Weekly or Medium.com actually uh, ranked it as 13th, uh, the best Guns N' Roses song, while Spin.com ranked it a bit lower. They ranked it as the 19th best Guns N' Roses song. I think it's probably easily in my top 10, but that basically does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story Guide. 
Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section on the song Coma. Where does it rank for you guys? Let me know. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the contents of this video. And be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do and you want to see more videos just like this. And you guys can go follow me on Facebook and Twitter and support me on Patreon. The links to all those channels are down below. Take care.